Sun Bonani guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Theodora Mugetsi. I'm not alone today. Hello. <laughs> I'm with my sister Lucinda. Um, so guys, as you know that um, I've been doing a series on being single, you know, just how to map out that season of being single. I know it's a very um, complex matter in the church. It's something that's always spoken about. And single women especially are given a lot of flag for not being married at a certain time. That's so true. Um, and those who do get married later on in like life. Like me. Like her. Um, and having made certain mistakes probably along the way, sometimes feel condemned yeah. or feel that they're not worthy yeah. of, of being married at a certain point in time. So um, this is probably our last sit down regarding singleness. So I hope you'll enjoy and you will be um, encouraged. So, uh, so as I said, I am with um, Lucinda Zamini today. Lucinda is a pastor's wife. Um, they lead Yay. a church. It's small, sorry. It's small. <laughs> it's small. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's when you're 50, it will get bigger. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, she leads a church with her husband called Gateway City Church. church in Alexandra. Yeah. Um, they've been blessed, I think, with five kids. Four girls. Four girls. Four girls. Please don't speak them. prophetically. I'm done. I'm done, guys. <laughs> I don't know if the hubby is receiving the fifth one. <laughs> um, she's an entrepreneur. She is also the founder of a ministry called Women of Reference. Please check them out on the internet. And um, she's a speaker. She's a preacher. Um, I don't know if, you, if it's like me. I always say I'm a speaker by calling and a preacher by gifting. Mm -hmm. And um, she's an all-round passionate person and wow. we're going to get to know um, Lucinda Zamini more today. Lucinda, just tell us a little bit about yourself. So hi again guys, my name is Lucinda Nombulelo Zamini and my nickname is Michael, I'm sure Theodora will ask. I was born in 1975, so I'm 45 mm -hmm. years old. And I'm married to a very handsome, I call him my Zimbabwean Come chocolate <laughs> Um And his name is Joseph Flamini. And Joseph, Joseph, did you get that? Yeah, if you want good husbands, go for Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> so anyway, um, we are here in Joburg, but I come from Lusigisigi in the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. And I am 45 years old. 45 never looked so good. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> At my age, you have said such nice things. Such lovely compliments. Yes. Um, now, Lucinda, when I read through your bio, one of the first things that jumped up was the fact that... Um, you had your first child at the age of 18. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. Okay. So I was doing my matric, I won't mention the school, um, in 1993, and I got pregnant um, with a baby girl. I was so, I think, when you get pregnant at, at that age, sometimes you're not even street smart or, I don't want to say stupid, but... You're almost like a, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You just don't know. And um, your hormones are raging, really. You don't have anyone to talk to. Um, our mothers didn't really teach us as clearly about sexual education yeah. as they're doing it now. And definitely not as schools as they're doing it now. So um, anyway, I got pregnant. The first person I told that I think I'm pregnant was my mom. Who does that? Who does you. that in the <laughs> black community? But anyway, so she took me to a family doctor yeah. who happened to be our neighbor and a good friend. And um, I did the test. I went back home. She waited for the results. That's why I'm like, I think I was a bit stupid. Yeah. She waited for the results. And she came and... Um, my mom is very sweet, very kind, very meek. So when she is not happy with me those days, she would say Lusanda. Mm. But when she was very happy with me, my girls, girl, and all of that, and she called me by my nickname. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, the test is negative. Voila, the test is not negative. So that hit me hard yeah. because I was in matric. I was doing well academically. I had plans to yeah. go to... Um, Technicon that I had applied, Cape Town Technicon and PE Technicon yeah. to study marketing. So I knew 
that I'll give birth by by November. Yeah. And I knew chances of me actually passing metric or writing metric that that year were not going to happen. So it hit me hard emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very difficult. Yeah. And we were not doing well financially. My yeah. mother's businesses were going down. So it was two things at the same time for her. Was she um, was she disappointed? <laughs> I would say she was. She didn't say it out loud. I think it's natural for any parent, especially because I'm the only girl. Yeah. I've got two, one older brother and one younger one. Yeah. So I think as a parent for myself as well, I've got four girls. So I have certain dreams, you know, for yeah. them. You want to see that they get married to a guy and you have these dreams of a wedding and all yes. of that. Yeah. So I could say she was disappointed, but she didn't say it out loud. So she was wise in that way. Yeah. But I know. I'm sure she was. Okay. And but your story is 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 a story of redemption and of restoration because at this point you're eighteen years old and yeah. you, you are not born again. No. Not yet. And mm. so um you you what made you go back to school to finish your matric? Actually, um I I stayed that year. Obviously I come from a family that is Normal, educate, not extremely educated, yes, yes. but educated. Yeah. So I wanted to go back because I, I had plans. I'm a very ambitious person. Yeah. I had plans for myself. My grandmother on my paternal side, so my my dad's mom also came to my mom and says, you have to take her back. I can contribute if I have to because he is studying at University of Westville mm -hmm. and he's doing his first year. So we can't have our child not study. And looking at our lineage, I was the first person to get pregnant out of wedlock. My okay. dad's sisters didn't. So my gran was very strict. She has to go yeah. back to school. And my mom wanted me to go back to school, finish matric and yeah. go to varsity or technicon okay. those days. Yeah. So um, when I know the, 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 the baby daddy, yeah. what, what's going on at this point of, of your relationship? I think um, he was, I must be honest, he didn't say go and abort or he didn't say, um, why didn't you think he maybe use contraceptives or whatever. Yeah. He was supportive in the sense that, okay, we're pregnant, we're here, but the relationship was not there. Okay. I think somehow um, boys, when they, at that age, that he was 21. Yeah. So they're not really serious and thinking marriage, first year varsity, he had his plans, his own plans. Yeah. And I think I was just not part of his plan. Okay. Yeah. So a few years later, um, you then decide to relocate to Joburg. Yes. And this first relationship is not working out and you meet... Um, somebody by the name of John. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling him John, but I have to be honest. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a no. Okay. I'm, I'm honoring comment. him because I didn't okay. say I would do yes. this. So um, John, um, before John, mm -hmm. I had dated some people. Okay, because I want our younger sisters to learn. Yeah, yeah. And those relationships didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, what that does, it actually hits your self confidence. Definitely, it 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 kills your self esteem really as a woman. Yeah, and sometimes you don't even say it to your friends. Yeah, yeah. you don't say it to your mom or your aunt, whoever yeah. you're close to. Um, and you keep on dating these guys. Three months they leave you, mm. or once you have sexual intercourse mm. with them, they leave you. Um, so and you start asking certain questions about yourself. Why I'm saying this also is, at that time I met Mr. John, I had not dated for two years. Okay. I had said I'm going to be celibate, yeah. but not under the knowledge of Christ. Yes, so yes. I have to mention So this that is just the decision, decision you, you make yourself, but in my own strength and in my own wisdom. Yeah. And that also will show if you do things in your own strength, in your own wisdom, and you leave Christ out, yeah. it never works. Yeah. So anyway, I eventually I met John in 2002, December. We A friend of us brings us together. It's a blind date. Um, and we hit it off. Mm -hmm. We got along. Um, and we decided to date. Yeah. In 2003, to fast forward, I moved in with him. Yeah. Now, I have to mention this. Because my mom... Because 
because she was a believer, yeah. she had warned me. Mm -hmm. um, because it was now at that time, 2002, even earlier, it was becoming very prominent yeah. or popular or fashionable. Shalisan, yeah. Shalisan. Yeah, yeah. So she had said, Mdanam, ungasu, Shalisan, mm. because you'll become a wife before you're a wife. Yeah. And I promise you, that man will never marry you. Yeah. Like any other girl, Guma, oh, I ain't clever. Guma, I was an Awachaduna 18 when I'm called Riazi. Was it that one car? Yeah. So, and I said, no, I won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> John came along, 2003, he asked me to move in with him. I even forgot that I had promised my mom. Lo and, and behold, what she said happened. It happened. Yeah. And never dishonor a praying mom. Yeah. So it happened. I moved in with John and we only, and he promised to marry me. Yeah. So I think that was also another hook. It was a hook, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, okay, it's going to happen. He didn't marry me. And and, and you were acting out wifely duties at, oh, at yes. this point. Oh, yes. We are washing, we are paying. Financially, we are demanding. You just like Nano Joseph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and that, um, I wasn't going to go there, but let me go there. That then brings, um, there's a soul tie that gets created yeah. sexually and financially. Yes. That when this relationship breaks, yes. um, how did that affect you um, to, 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 to cut those ties? Financially, first I'll start there, it impacted me because um, most of the things were done in his business account. Yeah. So I got a car repossessed. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were look. I was paying into his net bank business account. Yeah, and clearly he was not, not paying, paying. And I was the next of kin, mm -hmm. so I got a call from West Bank to say, "Hey, where's this person? You're the next of kin. He owes us forty five thousand. We're looking for a black run. So I'm like, I'm the driver. I'm yeah. the owner. So um, then they said, "Well, CC, good dollars in Mfuna. As in Fumani, we are Mazi. Nabending a Maz." Mm -hmm. So anyway, Daddy, I've got the car. So what he get? But it's either you pay the forty-five thousand plus, or you give us the car. I took the car back. That's stupid. To West Bank. No, it's fine. He's not even telling you that. I'm not paying. Christ died for him. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you were supporting his lifestyle. Got a two point. Um, that you were uh, two thousand rand that you were putting into his account every month. It was month. more than that. But I don't know what I was doing. Don't ask <laughs> to show by whatever you do out of Christ. Yeah. It's done with the eyes of darkness, really. I will yeah. um, But I, I had actually jumped the gun. Uh, mm. I just wanted to talk about the soul ties a little mm. bit. But then um, you fall pregnant again with, yes. with John's child yes. out of wedlock. Again. Um, take us through that process. Was this before you could see that the relationship is not working out? Or was it kind of like happening at the same time? You're pregnant and you can see that there's no future here. Was it a happy pregnancy or a, mm, I did it again? Kind of I famous. think for me it was as much as I deemed we were in love yeah. with each other, but I never wanted a child out of wedlock yeah, yeah. again. So um, it was not a happy pregnancy um, in terms of us, we planned it and all of yeah. that. It happened, um, but yeah. So we there was red flags, there was red flags, but... I think I ignored them, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. And were you fully aware of those um, red flags at the at the time of the pregnancy? I was not fully aware. I think I saw the red flags in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. When I could now uh, process everything. Yeah. I don't want to na name and shame him. Yeah. But he played well. That's yeah. the best I can put it. Yeah. He played the game very well. And of course, as as a as a young lady, you were you were charmed um, because that is what. I or sometimes we want this thing. We so want badly. the one. Yeah, the one. You you ignore certain, certain things. things. Yeah, and, and sometimes you really truly blinded. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, 
uh, he played the game well. Yeah. In some instances, I was blinded. In some instances, maybe I should have sat and really reflected and thought about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, so John promises you a heaven on earth. He promises to marry you, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just doesn't happen. No, um, he, it doesn't happen. Um, he actually goes and marries someone else yeah. on our date that he owed the month he had promised. Yeah. He came to the hospital when I gave birth. He named the child. So he was sort of involved. Mm -hmm. um, but he had promised someone else, clearly. Yeah. And then he married someone else. His, his best friend, who's late now, yeah. and their wife came to tell me um, that he's married. And also they found out after the, mm -hmm. after the wedding day or whatever, they, the celebration, yeah. So the first person they thought of was me and the baby that was two months. Yeah. So they came and told me. Okay. Yeah. So 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 this must have affected you um a lot because um you say that at some point your mom then moved to Joburg to come and be with you and support you yes. emotionally. Yes. So take me through the the, the psychological process now. Um. You know, you, you were pregnant at 18, it affected your self-esteem, your self-confidence, this yeah. thing is happening again, now you're in Joburg, you're far from your family, you're kind of like uprooting your mom to come live with you. Mm -hmm. Take me through that, um, were you kind of like depressed? I know they use the word loosely these days, but yeah. Um, I, I think you despondent. You, yes, I think you become depressed. I would lie if I said, "Oh, he married someone else. Yeah. I'm fine." You get angry. You get bitter. You you get depressed or hurt. Um, you. But I think God orchestrated everything because yeah. my mom. We have such a brilliant relationship. I can talk to her even about my feelings, yeah, yeah. about my emotions, about my mental state. Yeah. And what is lovely at that time, God is so gracious. You know that scripture that says in Lamentations, I think, I think it's Lamentations 3, verse 20 to 21, it says his mercies are new every morning. Yes. God actually, it's a, it's, it's, I hope we won't run out of time, but God, I had an encounter with God mm -hmm. through a dream in my room. Mm -hmm. And all I could say in that room was, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've never felt such a soft hand in my life. And once he touched me, I don't know why I said that, but I said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they yes. do. That led me to know that it's time. I had rejected Jesus or the gospel for many years. My maternal side of the family, my mom's family, my gran, and my mom's siblings, they know Jesus. So we grew up with the influence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it's either that or I die. Yeah. So I, I then came to know the Lord in this process. And the, I have to honor this local church. It's, it was called then Santon City Church, but now they're called Upper Room mm -hmm. in Bryanston. And they, it was led by Nicola and Peter Mannings. Or should I say Peter and Nicola Mannings? Yeah. Does it better? <laughs> Peter and Nicola Mannings. Yeah. But, and the whole eldership team, leadership, and just the community of that church. Mm -hmm. That church took me in. I was broken mm -hmm. to the team. And they allowed God to use them at that mm -hmm. time to walk with me. So in, in, a, in a sense that was I depressed that I was taking antidepressants or did I go to um, a, a hospital for some time to, to mm -hmm. walk with a psychiatrist? No. But was I hurting? Yes. Did I become bitter? Yes. Was I sad? Yes. Was I in denial at some point that this happened again? Yes. But God, in his mercies, came and yeah. picked me up from the pit of hell, yeah. stinking, and said, I will clean you up. So that scripture that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, mm -hmm. for me, it came through salvation. Yeah. It became alive. It became real. It, yes, it, it, it was tangible. Yeah. And that church, so I won't even pick up and oh, pick one person. Mm -hmm. That church in that season, everyone 
loved us. Yeah. With my 13 year old. And, and I must say, say I think it's, it's, it's quite divine that you are born again, um, not, not actually in a church set up but at home, in your bedroom, while yes. crying out to God, because those are actually the prayers of your mother. All oh, my, I always say, so, I give credit to my yeah, grandmother. Thank you, Granny, and thank you, Mama. She's in heaven. It's generational. Um, yes. You couldn't escape salvation, you even know if what? you wanted to. My grand went to Assembles of God in yeah. Entabangul. It's like God had given her this, this divine knowledge that you will never be rich. Yeah. You will never leave wealth and yeah. treasures for your your children yeah. and their children's children. Yeah. But Jesus, Give them Jesus is the wealth and treasure. Amen. So I know assembles of God the Dabangul Babes Tandase. Oh mama to start mm -hmm. off with and ask the third mm -hmm. generation. Eh, assembles of God the because my mother went there. Yeah. Babes Tandase. Yeah. So I know that my gran and my mom and her siblings and my other aunts and go Libode, yeah, the Luhabis that are saved there, I knew they prayed for our generation, yes. especially. So, God, I said, to, I think Psalm 56, verse 8, He collects your tears and put yes. them in a bottle. So, my grand's tears yes. from her children's generation and our generation were collected, yeah. It's and actually we, the word of God became flesh in, yes, in your life. Yes. So now um, you you are in Joburg. You have two daughters, two lovely daughters. You have now received Jesus as as Lord and Savior. Mm. You are committed to a church. Yes. Take me through this phase of your life. Um, how you navigating that phase of your life? You see, see when you're loving God. Um, you're healing, you're raising your kids, your mom mm. is around. Take me through that, that, that phase of your life. You know what? Because I had personally said it out loud one day in my encounters or when Jesus was pursuing me in that, he, not in Google. Yeah. I'm not ready for you. Yeah. So I knew that a radical change had to happen. Yes. So in this, in the, in the church I was part of, they were very good at raising people. Okay. So they were very intentional. Mm -hmm. So I've always prayed. Yes, you pray, yeah. you grow up. So I've always been a prayer, a faster, even doing a casting this. So at that time, I said, you know what? This is the area that I mostly has, have failed yes. in choosing my own partner. Mm -hmm. I did a commitment to God. I said, Lord, I will not date for the sake of dating. Mm -hmm. I, I think that. I have dated enough. Yeah. So if you have your son for me, he has to come and tell mm -hmm. me that I know you are my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get to know you because who get to know you these days can take 10 years yeah, to get yeah. to know you. I said, Lord, he will tell me, I, I know you are my wife. I have a year. I'm going to marry you. Mm -hmm. That in that year, it will give me time to mm -hmm. consult God for myself because yes. I'm from mm -hmm. So, um, and I said, Lord, I won't date. That and I said, Lord, if ufunega undenze be unattractive, do that. Yes. If ufuni gloria kwa le kumbando yige bama approach, do that. Yeah. I promise you, in those five years, no one approached me. Wow. I committed. We are born as a scripture city. Seek ye first the, the kingdom. kingdom. Yes. That is the scripture mm -hmm. I held on. And I did whatever God asked me to do. I used to evangelize. I used to go and minister in, into Zimbabwe with my pastor. And that's how I met my current husband. And I just did what God asked me to mm -hmm. do. I was just faithful in the in the season. And I said, Lord, if I'm not you mean it, it's okay. It's not okay. Yeah. You will just have to kill the desires of the body. Yes. So I did pray the prayer because get your hormones now. So it's yeah. So I did say, yeah, at the desires of my flesh. Okay. Yeah. And just to, to I think I just want to focus on, on that point. So um, you were celibate for about single and celibate for about five years. Yes. And it wasn't easy because um, as much as you would say, kill the desires, they, they would arise mm -hmm. sometimes. Yes. Right? Um, because I just think I want I want single women to know that it's okay 
to have a silent season. It's okay to have a, a season in your life where there is no man and there yes. is no partner. Yes. Because I think a lot of times, especially um, women who come from um, bad families, uh, broken families, yeah. should I say, you, you want to be loved so much. Yeah. You want that yeah. father figure so much that you, you want to skip that phase of singlehood. And, and there's really something that God does um, in oh, your yes. life in that season. Oh, yes. And, and what do you think God was doing in you in that five years to prepare you for marriage? First of all, he dealt with unforgiveness towards John. Yeah. Because Darkness and light cannot meet. Yeah. I can't have bitterness and carry it to my current marriage. So he dealt with it. Yeah. Secondly, he dealt with, I am enough, Lusanda. Yes. Like, it's funny that you brought up, maybe because we're friends, you know that my dad died when I was six. Yeah. So I've always desired a protector, yes. someone who's going to love me. My daddy named me Michael for after the song Temptations. Mm -hmm. Michael, Michael, I was his only girl. From what people told me, I was his princess. Yeah. So I desired that mm. unknowingly mm, mm, that mm. these boyfriends should provide yes. that. And they can't. And they can't. Yeah. Only God the Father. Yes. Even now, you realize that even your natural father, nobody will be solid down that they will never be able to love you perfectly. Yes. Yes. So that God dealt with Uba, I have a calling and a purpose mm -hmm. for your life. Mm -hmm. God dealt with your children, yes. although you are single, come first. Yes. That's your priority. Mm -hmm. um, and God dealt with, I'm your Jehovah Jireh. Yes. I'm your provider. Amen. You are, so God basically revealed himself. Yeah. First thing I sum up. Yeah. Revealed himself of, to me, yes. and dealt with a whole lot of rough edges in me. Yeah. Temper, is quelle. I have to be honest and, and share this. It's quite vulnerable, but I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to share. Yeah. At some point, like the whole chat, I was still thinking a lot about him. Yeah. I was struggling with another rejection. Mm -hmm. Remember, 18, we are hooked on a boyfriend, mm -hmm. then we date a couple of people, and Guba Bonke, I was the one rejected. Yeah. So I'm not even going to hide that. So another one. Yeah. So I was and like, he, he, he just yeah, doesn't promised. believe you. He yes. marries. Yes. So it's quite deep. It's quite deep. Yeah. So the man and the thing, the man and the booze are not equal questions. Can you mean in the lele? Umla mawam on its own moved. Kuche ni utunga gomi eni wumtuji uyakeleza. That day, I knelt down. I repented. Mm. I asked God to forgive me. I asked God to bless their marriage. That's when I was released from bitterness and unforgiveness. Wow. Because I acknowledged my sin and I let the blood of Jesus wash me and I surrendered to God to say, I'm struggling. Yes. Because mm, mm, mm. And Utiko, when the release, yeah. he freed me from that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so now, five years later, you meet your hubby. <laughs> Zim chocolate. <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. So how how did you know? How did you know that that, that Joseph is the one? Funny enough, sometimes it's a tell us in the boutique and we forget yes. what we say. Yes. So in 2009, uh, an elder at the church I was with, who steward Morgan, said to me, Pray, God is saying in the season, pray specifically. Okay. For whatever you desire. Mm -hmm. So a husband was was one of those prayer requests. And mm -hmm. I, yes, I was okay with the list. Yes, yes. So I had my list. Yes. But what I told you earlier to say, the one you have for me, Lord, must say, I, I know you, my wife. Yeah. So that's what my Joseph said. Mm -hmm. But I didn't accept it. Yes. I didn't receive it. I had forgotten what I had written 2009 because yeah. now it was 2011. And I think I didn't accept it because Ruth Joseph had recently lost his first wife, his mm -hmm. love of his life. Yeah. They were married for 20 years. Um, and he was an older brother, a pastor that I respected, I knew from Zim. Um, so there was never an attraction. Yeah. So I became quite angry. But I think people should know accountability yes. is very important. Mm -hmm. So I submitted this the statement because he said i know you my wife 
Okay. So I submitted the statement to my home group leader, to who were deacons in the church and the eldership of the church, and I also prayed. And in it, I prayed, but in the praying, God showed me more things he wanted to work in me first. Okay. So I would repent of certain things. God would show me some rough edges and I'll be like, Lord, help me. Then maybe after three or four months, then God said, pray to love Joseph. Mm -hmm. So I prayed now to say, Lord, I've wow. never looked at him that way. I was never attracted to him. The then, brother. Yeah, <laughs> then the brother, the brother. <laughs> I'm also not his first choice. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're older, Tina. Yeah, so yeah. we speak about this. Yes. I'm not the type of woman he would have gone for yeah. first. So anyway, but after six months mm -hmm. of prayer with the church, with, mm -hmm. with, I then met with my home group leaders every week, the female, Kathy, who was a friend, we would meet at least once a week to talk this through. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be a therapist as well. So we talk these things through and we dealt with, Things from childhood yeah. that would maybe be issues in my marriage. So, but one day, Sia Zim on ministry, and we are a keg, believe it or not, and I'm having a coffee with a friend of mine, Uwazanai, and Utiko Wavewa were almost like were exaggerator, enjoy your band. And I know that was a vision for myself only. A band normally, but the, um, no, mm -hmm. like, it, like there was such a tangible presence of joy yeah. and God said you will have joy here wow. in Zim then uh, Joseph was taking me out for coffee as well Siamba, we mall, um, in Zim and God said to me you will find peace here mm. and then I knew from there that he is my husband and I'm supposed to move to Zim Beautiful. So, so, so now you guys, um, Joseph tells you um, that he, that, that, that he's going to marry you. Yeah. You guys are in the process of courtship. Yes. But you, um, you have made a, I think this is important. You have made a covenant with yes. God now yes. that, that, that you will be celibate. You've been purified. Yes. And Joseph is a man of God. Yes. So take me through um, before marriage. How, how was the dating? The dating was lovely because he was 1,000 and odd kilometers okay. from me. Mm -hmm. So the temptation was very limited. Okay. We would see each other, I think it was every two months or every three months. Okay. We had a very good telephone relationship. And I think it was better that he actually was married before or God had given him wisdom. Yeah. We were able to talk about things that maybe naturally you wouldn't talk about. Cannibal islands of Funiabu movie, they are yeah. all romance. But with Joseph, I call him a journalist. Yeah. I think because of his teaching gift, he's able to investigate yes. what is in your heart. So we were able to talk about that. We talked about the vision, where God is taking us um, and all of that. So we were able to really talk more than do the fun things. Mm -hmm. I think the temptation came really, we are supposed to get married, okay. the sexual temptation. However, both of us, our pastors were very strict. Mm -hmm. We had a third person and we were not allowed to hold a hands. Remember, he was 30, I was 36 and yeah. he was 43. But we were so submissive to that. Yeah. Only... Uh, really tried. Yeah. Two times we nearly did it. <laughs> but God's grace he came. That's great. Yeah. Okay, guys, we are um, um moving towards the end of the interview, but the good news is Lucinda will be at the conference on the 28th of March and she will go in depth about um, her story but also the learnings that she took out of out of that. But just as we close, um, Lucinda, just encourage single, single women who have a past to say that you can go through something 
but God is a God of redemption, is a God of healing, is a God of restoration. I mean, today you're a pastor's wife, you're a preacher, you're a speaker. Looking back, you you, you couldn't have thought that God oh, yes. would use you because yes. sometimes it feels like it's left for us, uh, yeah, yeah. it's virgins or, you yes. know, people who grow up in yes. church, the, the, the so-called yes. perfect people who get that. But yes. God was gracious towards you. Yes. So just give a word of encouragement to, to the ladies out there. You know what? If I would say anything, your past is not your future. Mm -hmm. However, your past can be changed to be a message. That's true. Your past is not your identity. Jesus is your identity. So hide yourself in the wing of Jesus. Trust Jesus. Love Jesus. Surrender to Jesus and watch him do exceedingly, Amen. abundantly, beyond your imagination, even your expectation in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I love that and I really do like Lucinda's story because it's really a story of redemption, of restoration and of um, what God can do. God never writes people off. So Amen. if you have a desire to be married, he will grant you the desires of your heart in due season. Um, for more of all of this, more of Lucinda, check her out on her website, Women of Reference. She'll also be at the conference. I hope you've been encouraged. Please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.